the spectacular Katie Walsh is back. You guys love her. I love her. I haven't seen her in a while. So I'm thrilled that she's here to help me play some catch up with Talk to Me, this little Australian horror film that is getting so much buzz. So many of you guys asked us to review. So here we are catching up with it. Uh, Katie, what's it about? Put your hand on it. Now say, talk to me. Yeah, so Talk to Me is the debut feature of Danny and Michael Philippou, who are known on YouTube as Raka Raka. Mm -hmm. They're filmmakers who've gotten their start on YouTube, which I feel like this may be, it's like one of the first like big titles from a YouTuber. I don't know. There must have been more, but... Does Mr. Beast make movies? I'm sure someone <laughs> in the comments can correct me, but this is probably the the best first feature from a YouTuber <laughs> YouTube, uh, <laughs> pair. It is so... I loved this movie. It was great. It is a very simple story about teen kids contacting spirits. Uh, they're it, instead of using a Ouija board, they are using this really creepy plaster hand, which they claim is the embalmed hand of a psychic. And what they do is they go to these parties and they grab the hand and they say, talk to me. They see a spirit and then they say, let, I let you in. And then the spirit goes in them. And it's sort of like a drug trip, like hallucinatory high where they, it, you know, kind of get addicted to like letting these spirits possess them. Their eyes turn black, they're kind of seizing, but they're really kind of addicted to this process. And there's a young girl, her name is Mia. She's uh, played by an actress named Sophie Wilde. And she is in mourning. She's lost her mother. And that makes her kind of a very porous, susceptible uh, person to um, kind of connect with the other side. So it's really about her kind of going too far into this uh, underworld. Yeah, I love this too. I thought this was really effective and it sort of plays with some ideas that some other movies do too in terms of like, like passing on trauma, right? Yeah. Like I feel like It Follows does that. Smile does that, right? Um, but this does it so effectively, so efficiently. The camera work is so cool. And just the, the very premise of it, I totally bought Yes. I bought the idea of this, like, as a metaphor for addiction, like, this mm -hmm. becomes their drug, as you said, because there's such a rush from it. And they keep, like, all these kids keep egging each other on to do it. Like, they don't drink. They don't do drugs. I think, like, one kid maybe smokes a joint here or there. But, like, this is their drug. And the way that their eyes glaze over and turn black is horrifying. But also you can feel in a visceral way the rush that they're experiencing. Mm -hmm. And you can see how it would be, like, the, the natural extension of something like a slumber party seance or, like, yeah. lie as a feather, as stiff as a board. Did you do all that stuff when you were a kid? I did oh, that. Yeah. Oh yeah, totally. I actually it never think, worked. <laughs> I'm convinced. I'm actually convinced we actually did light as a feather, stiff as a board, and it worked. But they frame this craze, this desire to, you know, be the next one to do the to do the talk to me ritual. Like it's spreading on Snapchat, and everybody's mm -hmm. looking at these stories and being like, "That seems cool." And they're all like, "It's like, hey man, take a take a hit of this." <laughs> yeah. Um. And so it is really that drug metaphor, but. I, I, but you know, they are dealing with grief and trauma in this way, but it doesn't feel like too heavy handed on that. Or it's like, that's the, the, the central metaphor, but they don't have to over explain it. I love that this movie doesn't really over explain a lot of things. You kind of are just like, yeah, that's the spirit world. And I'm just going to go along with it because the movie believes in it and they don't have to explain to me how it works or any of that stuff. Like it's just a really high concept, really well executed. And I love that they don't rely on jump scares. Yeah, they don't. They do some cool stuff with some camera work that like puts you on edge. Like the camera will move with them. Yeah. When they're going into the trance or being possessed by the spirit or whatever you want to call it. Um, but yeah, it's not, it's never cheap. You know, yeah. um, someone asked me, is, is it elevated horror? I don't think it's horror, mm. uh, elevated oh. horror rather. I think it's just a straight up horror it's straight movie up horror. With, with the supernatural. Yeah, it's just mm -hmm. a really well made, well executed mm -hmm. um, ghost horror movie. And I think the camera works really good. I love that right. they kind of contrast 
the phone cameras because so, so many of the kids are using their phone cameras to capture these events with the actual camera. So the phone camera feels really flat and rigid. And then the actual camera is really like elastic. It's athletic. It's moving around them and go, getting really close to their eyes and stuff. And it's it doesn't rely on jump scares because it is just really dark and grisly and grim in a way that is like very disturbing. <laughs> But also very sad because, you know, you can see the longing that she has mm -hmm. to connect with the spirit world, Mia, that is. And uh, and who wouldn't want the opportunity to go back and talk to their mom again? You know, like she she knows that like trespassing deeper into this realm is dangerous, but also like, you, you feel her pain and the vulnerability she's, and the longing she's experiencing. And Sophie Wilde is so great in this because she has to tap into those sad emotional moments, but also when the spirit takes over her, she's fucking chilling. Like the way yes. her body changes and her voice changes and like the way she freaks out everybody in the room. I'm like, oh my God, what's going to happen here? <laughs> I am obsessed with Sophie Wilde in this so performance. Good. This is, she is going to be a star. Mm -hmm. She, this is one of those out of nowhere, out of left field, iconic scream queen performances. <laughs> I'm so obsessed with her. It's like, she mm -hmm. reminds me and her character, Mia, reminds me a lot of the heroine of my favorite movie, which is Carrie. Um, oh. In the sense that she is deeply vulnerable and that makes her more susceptible, like I said mm -hmm. before, to the uh, possession, the spirit realm type of um, stuff, but also because she straddles the line between victim and villain. So she's this really morally sort of compromised character where you can't just feel super... Um, oh, she's totally in the right because she makes a lot of bad decisions mm -hmm. along the way. Um, but she's trying to fix things and she just is coming from a place of such deep sorrow and hurt and pain because of the loss of her mother and sort of the rejection that she feels a little bit from her friends, what, or not, not even a little bit, a lot bit from mm -hmm. her friends when things start to go awry. It's also a movie about mothers and daughters, not just because she has lost her mother, but also because she has this surrogate mom who's uh, played by Miranda Otto, who's kind of like a next door neighbor friend type mom. Single mom. mom. Single mom who's friend, the mom of Jade and this kid named Riley. And um, it's about her surrogate mom relationship with her and also the loss of her own mother and, and the tenuousness of those relationships, but also like the really strong spiritual connections between mothers and daughters. And so there's just like a lot going on, but at the same time on its face, it's just like, this is a, ki a movie about kids doing spooky stuff. And it's just like made really well. <laughs> Yeah, Miranda Otto, I like a lot in this. Like, if you know her only from Lord of the Rings stuff, this is like a very grounded, kind of no-nonsense, really funny oh, yeah. performance. So it's cool to see her doing that. And it's got to be a really low-budget movie, but, like, the makeup effects are pretty great. Like, they're gooey-gooey, tactile, yucky. Yeah. And then the sound design is really effective, too. Like, the way that sound is layered and the, like, the, a crunching that occurs and voices that come in from different places in the spirit world. So, yeah, good job, Raka Raka boys, because you've done a really, really, really good job with your first film and like it's impressive it does not feel like a first film it feels very assured to use a critic -y word that we like <laughs> it's a really confident really smart first feature so what is your number my friend Ooh, i hadn't even thought about it um <laughs> i'll give it a 7.5 okay i'll say like an eight okay That's really well done okay yeah, cool. it is Thank you, my dear. Katie, Katie Walsh from Tribune. Check her out everywhere. And uh, thanks for watching. And let us know what you thought about the movie. Oh, and subscribe. You guys, subscribe. Thanks.